Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last class, we had seen that how propulsive efficiency plays a role in determining what kind of systems we need to use under what conditions. In this class, let us look at what is the role of overall efficiencies. Okay. Now, towards the end of the last class, we had derived the expression for the thermal efficiency of the uh, system for both air breathing as well as non air breathing systems, and this is the expression that we had derived. Now, from this we can derive an expression for the overall efficiency okay. what is overall efficiency? Overall efficiency is this divided by this. Now, we have done this divided by this, we have done this divided by this. So, the overall efficiency we can express it in terms of propulsive efficiency and thermal efficiency. We will see how to do that a little later as I can write this overall efficiency as eta propulsive into eta thermal right. Now, eta propulsive is what is eta propulsive? F V A by F V A plus m dot A V E minus V A whole square by 2 into eta thermal is F V A plus this is the expression that we get. So, <coughs> I can cancel these two out right? and we will be left with this is nothing but this quantity divided by this quantity right. <coughs> the propulsive power divided by the input power is what you have as the overall efficiency. <coughs> now, this expression is valid for both air breathing as well as non air breathing propulsion. Now, let us look at the first case that is air breathing propulsion. For air breathing propulsion, we can write this expression. We as 
theta overall is equal to m dot a v e minus v a. This is the thrust part into v a divided by Okay. Now, I can divide uh, the denominator by numerator and denominator by m dot a, I will get V e minus V a into V a. where f is nothing but m dot f by m dot a. Okay. <coughs> what is, I uh, will take again the definition of r, r is nothing but v a by v e. If I use this definition of r and rewrite this expression, I will get theta overall is equal to v e square If I divide both the numerator and the denominator by V e square, I will get this expression. This is V e. Let me call, let me define a parameter called E, which is nothing but F into Q divided by V E square by 2. Okay. Now, this ranges between Four to ten for air breathing engines, okay, and uh, F R square. If you look at the other quantity, that is F R square. F R square is typically between point zero one to varies between point zero one to. 0, 4. So, this is very small compared to E. So, therefore, we will neglect this portion. Okay. For air breathing propulsion, we will neglect F r square is very much less than E. Therefore, neglecting f r square, we can write the expression for overall efficiency as 2 r into 1 minus r divided by e, right. And this whole quantity here is nothing but, this is nothing but E, fine. So, <coughs> we will get this expression. 
for overall efficiency. When is this maxima? Again, we need to differentiate. This is very simple. You will get two r minus two r square. or r is equal to half okay r is equal to half gives you the maximum value and what is the value of overall efficiency at this point r equal to half you put half here you will get 2 into half 1 1 minus half that is 0.5 so that is 1 by 2e now e value we know ranges between 4 to 10 so overall efficiency what is the highest value 1 by 20 is 5 percent so overall efficiency for air breathing propulsion varies between 5 to 5 percent to 12.5 percent which is a very very low number okay so please remember air breathing propulsion uh, air breathing propulsion has very low efficiencies associated with it and it is typically in the range of maximum is around 12.5 percent okay. Now let us do the same exercise for rocket engines. If we do the same exercise for non air breathing or rocket engines, again overall efficiency is F V A divided by M dot F Q right here there is no M dot F right for rockets there is you need to carry both fuel and oxidizer so this is M dot no M dot F plus M dot V A square by Okay. So we know that F is equal to M dot V E right for rocket engines and if you substitute that you will get eta overall is equal to M dot V E V A. fine I can cancel out m dot here and again using r is equal to v a by v e I get 2 r or if I divide both the numerator and denominator by v e square I get overall efficiency as
I get the expression for overall efficiency dividing by V e square as and in the denominator I have Now using the definition of R, I can write this as 2R divided by, I will call this quantity as ER, I will define ER as equal to Q by VE square by 2, R indicates here rockets, so I will get this as ER plus R square. Okay. Now, typical value of Q for uh, the rocket, the heat of uh, formation or heat of reaction. What is it? Q for uh, kerosene, forty-two megajoules. What do you think will be the Q for rockets higher than that? lower than that what do you expect it to be higher sure actually the q would be something between 4.2 to 6 megajoules per kg it is lower than that why do you think we use such a bad uh, propellant as rocket in rockets or is there a catch here? If you look at rockets, rockets need to carry both fuel and oxidizer, right? This is per kg. Now, this includes both fuel and oxidizer, whereas if you looked at uh, kerosene, it was only for fuel, you did not account for the oxidizer because here you are looking at both fuel and oxidizer this will have to come down right this will have to be lower than what you get with kerosene okay so e q is something like this and therefore er will range between something like 1.5 to 3 Okay. So, compared to that R square you cannot neglect if especially rockets can operate in a regime where R is greater than 1. So, you cannot neglect R square compared to E R the thing that we did in terms of aircraft engines or air breathing engines is not valid here. <coughs> so, again we have to find uh, uh, the maxima value will take the derivative so taking the derivative of overall efficiency with respect to r here i get 2 er plus r square minus two R E R plus R square the whole square right and this simplifies to Two E R minus two R square divided by E R plus R square the whole square. So when will the derivative go to zero in this case? Either when this goes to infinity or when the numerator goes to 
0. In this case the denominator cannot go to infinity, so the numerator has to go to 0 that is or r is equal to okay fine so you get the maximum value when r is under root of er okay and so r will be typically greater than 1 because er ranges from 1.5 to 3 so r will be greater than 1 in this case <coughs> and eta overall maximum would be if you substitute this into this expression here so you get under root 2 under root er 2 e r square so you get 1 by under root e r okay. So if it is 1.5 efficiencies can go very high actually in for rockets right and let us plot uh, this. If we plot overall efficiency for both air breathing as well as non air breathing engines and on x axis we have V A in kilometers per second This curve is for air breathing engines and this is for rockets or non air breathing engines. You see that overall efficiency is much higher for rockets compared to aircraft engines, aircraft engines this was around 12.5 percent right whereas rockets it can go up to 85 percent fine. Now before we go there firstly I forgot to tell you that uh, if you look at uh, in this case also you, there is an optimal value for V e with respect to overall efficiency for air breathing engines one value and there is another value that you can choose in with regards to propulsive efficiency okay there are two efficiencies propulsive and overall efficiency 
for air breathing engines you usually the value of r that gives you maximum overall efficiency does not give you higher propulsive efficiency, but you go for the maximum overall efficiency. So, you choose r such that your overall efficiency is maximum for air breathing engines. Okay. <coughs> for air breathing engines such that overall efficiency is maximum maximized okay fine now if you see this graph you will find that <coughs> I have to say what kind of fuel and other things Q is equal to 5 mega joules per kg V e is 2.82 kilometers per second and here for air breathing q is equal to 0.02 and f fuel air ratio is somewhere around 0 0.02 okay so if you take a look at this graph it feels that overall efficiency of rockets is way better than overall efficiency of air breathing engines notice that V e is 2.82 kilometers and the maxima occurs somewhere here which is what I had said earlier r is greater than 1 for maximum value it, it goes as under root e r okay. So, why not use rocket engines everywhere after all overall efficiencies are very high. So, we should be using rocket engines instead of air breathing engines everywhere is that a valid statement. Right, efficiencies if you look at it says they are very efficient machines. So, why not we use rocket engines everywhere what is the hitch huh? ISP okay. uh, in a sense yes you are saying something, but if you look at aircraft engines and rocket engines uh, or air breathing and non air breathing engines there is an important thing that distinguishes them that is a rocket engine or a non air breathing engine will have to carry both fuel and oxidizer on board right. Because they carry fuel and oxidizer on board and <coughs> uh, rocket engines typically operate at very very high pressures ok. So, they add heat at very high pressures therefore, they can expand to low pressures there is greater availability and hence they are more efficient in that sense, but efficiency per se does not have any meaning here because you have to carry a lot of propellants in order to achieve what you want to achieve. Uh, to give you an example If you take PSLV's weight, at lift off it is something like 294 tons ok, uh, it is payload for to low earth orbit would be 
would be something like 3250 kgs almost one tenth of its overall weight okay. So the useful thing that you can carry in a rocket mode uh, rocket propulsion is very small compared to the overall weight although it might be efficient you end up having to carry more of fuel and oxidizer there because you have to carry both and the useful payload that you can carry is very very small typically what is this 100th is it uh, 300 uh, yeah 100th of the overall weight right. Now let us take a look at what are similar numbers for Boeing 747. Uh, it is empty weight is around 178 tons, okay. it is fuel weight. There again around 173 tons and its maximum takeoff weight that is what is the weight of the aircraft, maximum weight of the aircraft with which it can take off. Ninety-seven tons. So, the payload weight should be the difference of this minus these two put together, right? So, the payload weight comes to be something like If you compare it with the overall weight or the maximum takeoff weight, it has increased from 1 by 100 to something like 1 by 10, which is far better, right. So, if you have to have a mission wherein you are looking at uh, going beyond the sensible atmosphere, then you have to use rocket motors, there is no other go. But if you have to look at a mission wherein you are travelling within the sensible atmosphere, then it makes sense to use air breathing propulsions. Again there is a restriction if you are looking at a very fast response system, then again you need to go in for rocket engines even within the atmosphere. Okay. The other point is what you made earlier that is for rocket engines it is more meaningful to look at what is the ISP. ISP tells you what is it that you need to carry, what is the propellant if larger the ISP then smaller is the propellant weight that you need to carry on board right. But if ISP becomes smaller then you need to carry more propellant on board okay. So ISP is a better uh, indicator of performance in rockets and not overall efficiency. Whereas for air breathing air propulsion it is overall efficiency is a very good indicator of what is the performance okay. Now let us look at how this overall efficiency impacts uh, the range of the aircraft okay.
Now, before we go there, we need to make a certain set of assumptions in order to derive this expression for range of an aircraft and how overall efficiency impacts it. Okay. <coughs> what is range firstly? Range is the distance that the aircraft can travel without refueling. Right. So, That is, if you are given a particular mass of fuel, what is the distance that the aircraft can travel? <coughs> now, if you look at long range aircraft, typically long range aircrafts, there is firstly the aircrafts need to taxi to the runway, then take off, right, climb to a particular altitude typically around 11 kilometers and then it will cruise at that altitude right and further upon reaching the uh, destination or getting close to the destination it has to climb down descend and then uh, land and then taxi to its docking position right all these operations are there but uh, most of the flying is done in the cruise range Okay. So, we will only consider that part when we are looking at what is the range that it can do. Okay. So, most flying is done in level flight category. Hence, we ignore climb descent take off and landing. We also need to make another assumption which is uh, quite valid for civilian aircrafts that is the mass of the aircraft changes only because of you are expelling out fuel okay. fine which is not true in case of military aircrafts especially if they have to drop bombs or drop fuel tanks and things like that or uh, fire missiles. Then the mass of the aircraft changes because of other things, but in case of civilian aircraft, the entire mass of the aircraft only changes because of fuel being expelled out. So, aircraft changes only due to Now, so we made these assumptions. Now, let us look at what is a level flight, what are the things that are uh, true in level flight, thrust must be equal to drag and lift must be equal to weight. So, for level flight, Okay. 
So, T is equal to D and lift is equal to weight okay. <coughs> and let me call M as the instantaneous <coughs> mass of the aircraft then I can write this expression for thrust as thrust must be equal to lift into d by l okay and uh, I can again rewrite this as lift is nothing but weight weight is m into g m is the instantaneous mass of the aircraft divided by l by d okay l by d uh, is a aerodynamic parameter and can be defined as such for a overall aircraft. Any idea what are the typical values for L by D for an aircraft? L by D for aircrafts, no, no idea, uh, it is something like uh, for Boeing, Boeing 747 it is somewhere around 17 during cruise and uh, Concorde. it is somewhere around 7 during its cruise at Mach number 2. For Concorde it is lower because drag is higher because it is going at supersonic speeds right. So, which is better a L by D of a larger value of L by D is better or a smaller value of L by D is preferable. which is preferable larger or smaller value of L by D huh? yes uh, a larger value of L by D is preferable because then you would have to spend less fuel okay. So, <coughs> which is why concords are very expensive right L by D is small L by D is large here. So, you can afford it and uh, uh, something like house sparrow one that flutters very quickly and flies around I mean it is a short short distance flights mostly the L by D for that uh, is around 4 whereas albatross which is more of a long distance flyer and mostly sails through uh, has a L by D of around 20 okay. So, L by D uh, also indicates what you can do. If you have a smaller L by D then you are mostly restricted to short flights. If you have a large L by D then you can think of longer flights. <coughs> okay, coming back here. So, from here we can uh, define thrust power as T into V A and T into V A is given by in this case M G V A by L by D okay and
and uh, we know from our efficiency calculations and other things what is thrust into V A, we had called it F into V A in that it is nothing but eta overall into m dot f into q right then okay. so <coughs> now if we combine these two we can write m dot f is equal to m g v a into q okay now this is mass flow rate of fuel this is a part of the entire mass of the airplane right so <coughs> using that fuel to be part of aircraft weight I can write m dot f is nothing but dm by dt and because this is going to decrease right it should be with a minus sign okay. <coughs> Now, I will change this variables from d m by d t to d s because we know that v d t is nothing but d s, s is the incremental range. So, I get from this d t is nothing but d s by v a and if you substitute for that here you will get m dot f dm by ds okay now s is nothing but the distance along the flight path s is okay so using this and this fine right? m dot f I know that expression. So, I can write an expression for d m by d s as minus m g divided by eta overall q into l by d. <coughs> now, in this case if we assume the overall efficiency to be constant and q to be constant and l by d to be constant we can integrate this expression so assuming to be constant then d s is nothing but how we can integrate this
integrating I will get S is equal to eta overall into log m1 by m2 m1 is the or I will call it m i and m f m f no I will retain it as m1 m2 m1 and m2 are initial and final mass of aircraft okay so in this expression you see that if the overall efficiency is high you get a longer range or also if your L by D is better you get a longer range fine. We will stop here and look at in the next class on the cycle analysis for various air breathing engines. Thank you.